what you want, Texas. This is Radio 2 on the BBC Sounds app, on your smart speaker and on 88 to 91 FM. BBC News at nine o'clock on Sunday, the 24th of July. Good morning, this is Catherine Cracknell. A third day of delays is expected at the Channel Tunnel and Port of Dover. A senior judge says too many divorce cases are ending up in court and success and disappointment for Great Britain at the World Athletics Championships. A major incident alert remains in force at the Kent port of Dover and the Eurotunnel terminal at Folkestone, where efforts are continuing to clear the backlog of lorries heading to France. Holidaymakers and hauliers are being warned of another day of disruption. Our correspondent in Kent, Simon Jones, has more. The port of Dover and the Channel Tunnel have been working through the night to begin clearing the backlog of 1,500 lorries parked on the M20. At Dover, the delays for tourist traffic have eased, but some Eurotunnel passengers say they've been forced to spend the night sleeping in their cars, trying to get to the terminal. The major incident declared on Friday remains in force, while the blame game continues. The government said the French authorities had failed to mobilise enough border staff to check passports and demanded action to resolve what it called this terrible situation. But the French transport minister, Clément Beaune, said France was not responsible for Brexit, with the additional border checks it brings. The focus of the Conservative leadership race is switching to immigration, with both candidates setting out measures to control the UK's borders. Rishi Sunak wants a cap on refugee numbers and to withhold aid from countries which won't accept the return of failed asylum seekers. Liz Truss said she'd increase the number of frontline border force staff by 20%. A leading judge has criticised the number of divorce cases heard in court and said their confrontational nature was harming outcomes for both adults and children. In a rare interview for a sitting judge, Sir Andrew McFarlane compared the issue with the divorce battle made famous in the 1979 film Kramer vs Kramer. Paddy O'Connell reports. Sir Andrew McFarlane is president of the Family Division of England and Wales, but his remarks will resonate around the UK. He said thousands of cases were rightly heard in court because of safety concerns for adults and children involved. But he said too many, perhaps 20% of all breakups, wrongly ended up in court, where one partner was forced to sue the other, and adversarial language often made things worse. In hints at further courtroom changes, he said journalists were too often unable to report the other highly sensitive issues in the family courts, including when children were taken into care, and it was time for change. Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, has accused Russia of barbarism after yesterday's missile strike on the port of Odessa. In his nightly video address, he said the attack was cynical. A day earlier, Moscow and Kyiv had agreed to allow grain shipments to leave the port. The model, Kate Moss, has told the BBC how she was asked to pose topless during a photo shoot when she was around 15 years old. She told Desert Island Discs she ran away from the session after she was told to take off her bra. Tyler Allen reports. In a wide-ranging interview, Kate Moss said there were several moments in her career when she felt uncomfortable about being told to pose without clothes. She said her first experience for the bra catalogue had sharpened her instincts and could now tell a wrong a mile away. She also also said she was reduced to tears when she was 16 when the late photographer Corinne Day told her to take her top off during a modelling set for the Face magazine. She said she had not felt comfortable being naked but added the pictures were amazing and had helped to launch her career. China's launched the second of three modules needed to complete its ambitious new space station. The module contains sleeping quarters and laboratory space and will be joined by a third compartment in October. The Chinese authorities hope the station, called Tiangong, or Heavenly Palace, will be operational by the end of the year. Great Britain have won their fifth medal at the World Athletics Championships in the United States. The men's 4x100 relay team claimed bronze, but there was disappointment for the women, as our sports correspondent Andy Swiss reports from Oregon. The British men's quartet of Jonah Efaloko, Zarnell Hughes, Nathaniel Mitchell-Blake and Reese Prescott managed to hold off Jamaica on the home straight for a battling bronze medal. Ahead of them, the favourites, the US, were pipped to the gold by Canada after a mistake with their last baton change. Earlier, the British women's team were right in contention as Dina Asher-Smith ran their third leg, but she pulled up just before handing over the baton and they finished six. Afterwards, Asher-Smith said she didn't know what had happened. My legs stopped corresponding with me, she said. 
The race was won by the US, who edged out Jamaica by four hundredths of a second. And the weather mostly cloudy in northern areas with heavy thundery spells of rain in places. It'll also be cloudy further south, although sunny and very warm in the southeast. Top temperatures of 27 Celsius in London, 24 in Cardiff, 22 in Edinburgh, and 20 in Belfast. And that's the BBC News at five past nine. Thank you. Hello, good morning. Listen live. On the BBC Sounds app. All right, then I will. If you're ready, we are. Let's do love songs. 